sweethearts, we are going to read a very, very fun book today. Doesn't have a name on the cover, but it is Westlandia, which we have read before. It is an awesome, awesome, super creative book with such fun pictures. And it's written by Paul Fleischman and illustrated by Kevin Hawks show you guys this instead of the blank cover. I hope you like it. We're sticking with our theme of outside springtime stories. So let's give it a read and see what you think. Of course he's miserable, moaned Wesley's mother. He sticks out like a nose, snapped his father. Listening through the heating vent, Wesley knew they were right. He was an outcast from the civilization around him. He, alone in his town, disliked pizza and soda, alarming his mother and the school nurse. He found professional football silly. He refused to shave half his head, the hairstyle worn by all the boys, despite his father's bribe of five dollars. So... Wesley stands out. He's a little different than the rest of the kids in his town. He likes different things than they do. Passing his neighborhood's two styles of housing, garage on the left and garage on the right, Wesley alone dreamed of more exciting forms of shelter. He had no friends, but plenty of tormentors. Fleeing them was the only sport he was good at. And a tormentor is somebody who won't stop bothering you. Um, very, very, very similar to a bully. I would say it's about the same thing as a bully. So he's got a big group of tormentors following him. He's jumping over his little raccoon guy. <laughs> Each afternoon, his mother asked him what he'd learned at school that day. That seeds are carried a great distances by the wind, he answered on Wednesday. That each, civiliz each civilization has its staple food crop, he answered on Thursday. That school's over and I should find a good summer project, he answered on Friday. As always, his father mumbled, I'm sure you'll use that knowledge often. Suddenly, Wesley's thoughts shot sparks. His eyes blazed. His father was right. He could actually learn what he, he could actually use what he'd learned that week for a summer project. That would top all others. He would grow his own staple food crop and found his own civilization. So when he says his own staple food crop, that would means the food that his civilization is the best, would be the best known for, like the thing that they eat the most. Like when we were learning about the Ohlone, one of their staple foods besides fish were acorns. The next morning, he turned over a plot of ground in his yard. That night, a wind blew in from the west. It raced through the trees and set his curtains snapping. Wesley lay awake, listening. His land had been planted. I love that the plant seeds look like they're magical flying in. Gives you a good idea of what might happen in the story. Five days later, the first seedlings appeared. You'll have almighty bedlam on your hands if you don't get those weeds out, warned his neighbor. Actually, replied Wesley, that's my crop. In this type of garden, there are no weeds. Following ancient tradition, Wesley's fellow gardeners grew tomatoes, beans, Brussels sprouts, and nothing else. Wesley found it thrilling to open his land to chance and to invite the new and unknown. I love these little plants. They look so cool. The plants shot up past his knees, then his waist. They seemed to be all of the same sort. Wesley couldn't find them in any plant book. Are those tomatoes, beans, or Brussels sprouts? Asked Wesley's neighbor. None of the above, replied Wesley. 
So his neighbors are only used to seeing the same three kinds of plants. This is very different. Fruit appeared, yellow at first, then blushing to magenta. Wesley picked one and sliced through the rind to the juicy purple center. He took a bite and found the taste, an entrancing blend of peach, strawberry, pumpkin pie, and flavors he had no name for. Ignoring the shelf of cereal in the kitchen, Wesley took to breakfasting on fruit. He dried half a rind to serve as a cup, built his own squeezing device, and drank the fruit's juice throughout the day. Pulling up a plant, he found large tubers on the roots. These he boiled, fried, or roasted on the family barbecue, seasoning them with a pinch of the plant's highly aromatic leaves. Look at this. He has got a whole little setup going on. He's got his fruit drying. He's got a spot to sit. So, so cool. It was hot work tending to his crops. To keep them off the sun, Wesley wove himself a hat from the strips of the plants. Oh, to keep off the sun, so he doesn't want to get a sunburn and get too hot. Wesley wove himself a hat from strips of the plant's woody bark. His success with the hat inspired him to devise a spinning wheel and loom on which he wove a loose-fitting robe from the stalk's inner fibers. Unlike jeans, which he found scratchy and heavy, the robe was comfortable. It reflected the sun and offered a myriad of opportunities for pockets. If you see over here, those tormentors, those bullies are watching him. I think he looks very cool. And how cool he made all that himself. His schoolmates were scornful. That means they like made fun of him and they were like, what are you doing? But then they became curious. Grudgingly, Wesley allowed them 10 minutes apiece at his mortar, crushing the plant seeds to collect the oil. This oil had a tangy scent and served him both as a suntan lotion and a mosquito repellent. He rubbed it on his face each morning and sold small amounts to his former tormentors at the price of $10 per bottle. $10 a bottle for a little bottle of sunscreen? Wow, must really work. What's happened to your watch? Asked his mother one day. Wesley admitted that he no longer wore it. He told time by the stock that divided, by the stock that he used as a sundial and had divided the day into eight segments, the, the number of petals on each flower. He'd adopted a new counting system as well, based likewise upon the number eight. His domain, home to many such innovations, he named Westlandia. So here is his little homemade sundial. And unlike our regular day that has um, 24 hours or 12 numbers on our clock, Wesley divided it into eight sections because that is the same as the number of petals on the leaves or the number of petals on the flowers that have taken over his yard and that have become his staple, his staple food. Uninterested in traditional sports, Wesley made up his own. These were designed for a single player and used many different parts of the plant. His spectators looked on with envy. Realizing that more players would offer him more scope, Wesley invented other games that would include his schoolmates. Games rich with strategy and complex scoring systems. He tried to be patient with the other players' blunders. So here's the game. It's the, it kind of reminds me of Quidditch with the three holes to shoot through, but they don't use brooms. It's like a mix between Quidditch, lacrosse, and being in the circus on stilts. <laughs> August was unusually hot. Wesley built himself a platform and took to sleeping in the middle of Westlandia. He passed the evenings playing a flute he'd fashioned from a stalk or gazing up at the sky, renaming the constellations. I 
I love all the animals that are coming over here. There he is. I hope you can even see. I think that's his neighbor in the window. What is this kid doing? I think that's an awesome place to sleep. I would if I had that in my yard. His parents noted Wesley has improved morale. That means he's been in a good mood lately. It's the first time in years he's looked happy, said his mother. Wesley gave them a tour of Westlandia. What do you call this plant? asked his father, not knowing its name. Wesley had begun to call it a swist from the sound of its leaves rustling in the breeze. In like manner, he named his new fabrics, games, and foods until he had created an entire language. So cool. Mixing the plant's oil with soot, Wesley made a passable ink. As the finale to his summer project, he used the ink and his own 80-letter alphabet to record the history of his civilization's founding. In September, Wesley returned to school. So here's Wesley using his new language and his homemade ink to write the history of his new civilization. And when Wesley went back to school in September, he had no shortage of friends. Everyone wants to go to Westlandia, and I want to go there too. In fact, you can see Wesley's language. So cool. All right, kiddos, that's it for today, Thursday. Remember, it's an early day, so you only have school until 1.30, and then you get to do something fun. Maybe you're going to go make a civilization in your backyard. See you tomorrow. I love you. Bye.